My husband had a meltdown and tried to end himself after I confessed that his boss, who is torturing him, is my ex. My husband hates his boss. I mean loathes him, and has since he was transferred to his division almost a year ago. He would come home almost every single night, complaining about him. He works in a very specific creative job, and there are very limited jobs in this area for his field of work. He is paid very well for his job, and if he wanted to stay in the same field, he most likely would have to move halfway across the country. All of our family and friends are right, so neither of us wants to do that. It had gotten so bad that he was looking at quitting and just taking a cut in pay. I told him I was fine with it, but he spent his entire life studying for this job. So his company has an annual holiday party, and last year we were gone, so we did not attend. This year however, they had it this past weekend, and lo and behold, we were available to go. This is a very large corporation, so there are literally hundreds of people at this party. When we go in, we start to talk to people, and I go sit down at our table, while he goes to meet with some of the people who work in his division who were standing at the bar. While I'm sitting there, I feel a tap on my shoulder, and there stands Paul. I have not seen Paul in years, and I immediately got up, and we hugged each other. Paul and I used to date in college, and we parted ways amicably because we were both going to separate places in life. But we did date for over a year, and as I said, I hadn't seen him in a very long time. So I was thrilled to see him again and catch up on our lives. I have no feelings for him other than that of an old friend, and I was just happy to catch up. We talked for a good long time until he asked me why I was there. And I said I was there with my husband. Yes, you can see where this is going. Paul, my ex, is the boss that my husband hates. He asked who my husband was, and I said his name, and Paul kind of looked stunned, and asked if it was the same person he knew. And I said I didn't know. He said he was the department head of title of job. And that is when it struck me that this was the boss my husband had been complaining about for the past year or so. He just said that he knew my husband, and didn't say anything else. We continued to talk for a while, and he said he would love to speak more with me, but he had to go back to his table as he was one of the speakers for the night. We both hugged each other, and he left. My husband walked up, just as we were pulling apart from our very platonic hug. As Paul walked away, my husband asked me what that was all about. I could tell he was very upset, and he asked if Paul was trying to hit on me. He, of course, has no idea we knew each other. He was starting to rant and rave about going to HR to file a complaint against him. I mean he was fuming mad. I was kind of stuck, because if I didn't step up and say something, I think he would have gone over to the HR table and filed a complaint right there and then. I just told him that we were old friends from college, and that we hadn't seen each other since graduation. I could see the color drain from his face. We spent the rest of the night with him watching his phone and leaving right after eating. He did not say a word to me on the way home. Once we got home, I tried to just talk in general, and he wasn't having any of it. I got the grilling of a lifetime. I could tell he was completely unhinged. He wanted to know why I didn't tell him I knew him. He went on to accuse me of laughing at him behind his back. He even went so far as to ask me if I was having an affair with him. I mean he was in a total meltdown. This is not normal for him, in case you are wondering. He is honestly the most rational person I know, and he has never even so much raised his voice to me in all of the years I've known him. He did eventually apologize to me, and then went on to continue to talk about how his life was hell because of his boss. Now here is the issue. I was absolutely petrified to tell him the real truth about Paul. He was completely irrational, and I was honestly afraid he would have spiraled out of control if I told him that Paul was more than just an old friend, but was actually an ex. I was not afraid of myself, by the way. I never feared that at all. But I honestly don't know mentally if he could have handled it at that moment. I think he might have done something irrational to himself or our relationship. I never hid this relationship from him. Neither of us have ever asked about previous relationships. I only know about one of his previous girlfriends because her sister said hi to him when we were at McDonald's. He knows nothing about any of my previous exes. We've both agreed that the past didn't matter. Well, I have a feeling it's going to matter. I am deathly afraid that Paul will say something to him now. Not in a mean way, but just in a passing way. That we used to be a couple. I have no idea how my husband will handle this. He is the love of my life, and I do not want to hurt him. I don't want to hide this from him or lie by omission. But I am very afraid of what this will do to him mentally. I am open to any suggestions here. Also, please don't think poorly of my husband. He is a great guy, and has been more than anything I could have ever dreamed of as a partner. But whatever Paul has done over the years has just made him insane. Relevant comments from OP.
I honestly don't know the entire reason. I know some of it is that he is critical of his work. Before I knew who it was, it always seemed very weird to me. My husband has won two national awards in his field for his work. He has been promoted inside his company faster than anyone in his field, and I know the hours of dedication he has put into it. I know he has forced him to work hours that go above and beyond what he is supposed to. I mean, the description of Paul by my husband is not the guy I dated years ago. However, that really is a big part of this. It was years ago. I don't know him at all and haven't spoken to him in almost 10 years. Obviously, I have to tell him. But helping him get over his hatred of him that part, honestly, I just don't know about. Is my husband a rational man? Without a doubt, until it comes to Paul, I think doing anything to minimize his feelings about Paul will only make the matter worse. I think if I said anything, it would come off as me defending Paul, and then I think my husband would feel very isolated and hurt. I want neither. Several people have said this. I'll be honest, I don't know. I mean, we have not spoken, texted, or done anything in nearly 10 years. We did not part on bad terms at all, so it's not like I dumped him while he wanted to stay together. We both knew that, after graduation, we would be heading down different paths. In all honesty, I just assumed he lived on the other side of the country. Also my husband, and I have been married for longer than he has worked in that department. So if he had access to my husband's personnel file, which I don't know why he would have, I am only listed as an emergency contact, and I have my husband's last name. But I guess, it is not out of the realm of possibilities. If that is the case, and if this is some kind of vendetta, then my husband should take this to HR. How he would ever prove that though, I don't know. Also frankly, Paul looked surprised when I said who I was married to. I guess he could be a great actor, but he genuinely looked surprised. We dated for over a year in college. I think my husband would be smart enough to figure out that we obviously had SX. He did not know my past, nor do I know his, but he was aware that I was not a virgin neither was he. To my defense, I only lied by omission out of fear of what it would do to him that night. I mean he was literally rotating between a raving loon and being so mad he was crying. I've never seen him do that before, BTW. At the moment, I didn't want to turn a bad situation into a disaster. Although all along I knew I was going to have to eventually. Was I doing self-preservation as well, of course. Since we've never talked about exes, I had no idea how the conversation would have gone. But this wasn't just some random ex to my husband. This was the personification of all that is evil in the world. And for me to have to tell him that we used to be a couple wassies, not going to be easy. Does anybody think for a minute that I want to lose my husband for something that I did not know, had no control over, and was with someone I haven't seen or spoken to for almost 10 years? I know my husband loves me, but I also know that, for whatever reason, when it comes to Paul, he is completely unhinged. I am very afraid he will hurt himself, or hell, he might even try to hurt Paul. But mostly, I'm afraid that he will try to throw away everything we have built together. I know in the long term he would not end us I hope, but the damage he might do in the short term really frightens me. As to the rest of your post, yay, I have no idea how this conversation will even go. As I said in another poster, my husband is not a moron. He's going to figure out that if we dated for a year in college, there is a pretty high probability that we had SX. It has been so many years ago, though if he wanted a lot of details, I am just not going to be able to give them to him. I never think about Paul or any of my exes for that matter. I adore, love, and worship my husband and don't dwell on anyone else. However, my husband is a man. And with that I assume, comes some of the male ego stuff that I am just not that familiar with. He has never been insecure about himself. However, when it comes to Paul, I have to plan for the absolute worst. Well, after the first hug, I had no idea who he was in relation to my husband. The last hug was just an awkward thing he initiated. But to not make a scene, I didn't pull away fast enough. In retrospect, I wish I would have excused myself and walked away. Update. I am sorry for those of you who have been writing and asking for an update. As you will soon read, I have not been back since the next day. After posting what I posted and reading a lot of the replies, I knew that I had no choice but to tell him and to tell him the very next day. There is a lot of preamble that needs to be said here and I will get to it below. But let me just get to how this went down for those of you who are only interested in hearing what happened. They came home, and I had supper prepared. He was in a fairly good mood, which at first I thought would make this a little easier, but in retrospect, it did not. In fact, it made it worse because I hated seeing the happy look dissolve. After dinner, I took him to the living room and sat him on the couch. I had a pretty lengthy speech prepared. It was a combination of facts, and well, honestly, 
a list of all of the great things about him that I loved knowing that I was going to have to be there to support him. He pretty much cut off my flowery speech and just said to say what I was going to say because whatever it was I was trying to say was obviously important, so I just said it. I just said, look, I didn't tell you that night because I was very afraid of how you were going to take this, but Paul and I dated for almost over a year in college. I had no idea he was the Paul you were complaining about. I didn't even know he lived around here. I have not had contact with him prior to the Christmas party for almost 10 years, and even that night I had no idea who he was in relation to you, until just literally moments before you came over. He just sat there for what seemed like forever, and then all he said was, I understand. That was it. It was monotone and passionless. I asked him if he believed me about the time frame, and said that I did not know who he was that night. He said, yes, and that was it. So I now go into my speech about how embarrassed I am about all of this. Under no circumstances on the planet would I ever do anything to jeopardize our marriage. He was my number one focus. And then I started talking about how much I loved him and would do whatever he wanted to do, even if it meant moving or doing something different. While I was talking, he stood up and said that he would like to be alone for a while and that he needed to leave to do this. Like an idiot, I start crying. I tell him that if he needs to be alone, that is fine. But I would be happy to leave. And he says no. He wants to go out to clear his head. He left in his car. I waited for a little bit not nearly as long as I should have. I'm sure but I then started texting him, telling him how much he meant to me. I told him that I would answer any question. And well, you can imagine all of the things I texted. He never replied. He left the house somewhere between 7.30 and 8. At 10.30, I received a phone call from a number that I do not know. But I did not want to be tied up hoping that he might call me. At a little after 11, I saw car lights pull into the driveway. So I was thinking he was back. But then the doorbell rang. There is no worse feeling on planet Earth than having two state troopers with their hats in hand at your door. As soon as I opened the door, I started screaming and crying. One of the troopers told me that my husband had been involved in a serious auto accident and that I needed to either go with them to the hospital or have someone take me. Obviously, I am hysterical at this point and am asking them if he is dead. The one trooper said that they did not believe he was, but they were notified by the hospital to notify me because they couldn't get in touch with me. The number I ignored was the ER calling me. I grabbed my phone and went with them to the hospital. On the way, I called his parents and told them to meet me there. I called my parents to let them know, but they were out of town for a few days, so I left a voice message. I got to the ER and the troopers took me in through a back door to avoid having to go to a desk. My heart was about to explode, and they told a nurse who I was, and she walked over and pulled back a curtain, and there sat my husband in an ER bed. He was awake and held up his arm to show me his cast. I was both relieved and overcome at the same time. Of course, I held him and bawled for quite a long time. He apologized for scaring me and said he would have called me, but his phone was still in the car. I asked him what happened and he said he hit some ice on the road and lost control, then slid off, hitting a tree. He said he thought his car was totaled. The rest was pretty much a blur. But eventually, once his parents got there, I left them in there with him to call my parents again to update them. That is when the state trooper approached me and wanted to talk. He said that while they couldn't totally dispute what my husband was saying, his story about ice did not hold up. Yes, it had snowed lightly, but there was no real ice on the road and there was no evidence at the scene to show where my husband attempted to either break or swerve. They also said that the only reason his injury was as minor as it was was because of our airbags, because he did not believe he was wearing a seatbelt. At first, I had no clue as to what they were trying to say, but ultimately it sunk in that they were implying he tried to end himself. No matter how bad this made me feel and believe me, I felt like shit my top priority at this point was him. So I went back into the room with him, and mind you, he is acting like everything is fine like our conversation from earlier didn't even happen. In fact, he was definitely overcompensating, trying to act happy and nonchalant. I stuck with him in the room for a while, and then eventually went out and spoke to his mom. She, by the way, was fully aware of everything. I confided in her after I got off work, because she and I have a great relationship, and I wanted her advice on how to handle this. She was a wealth of information, and was very supportive that afternoon. I told her what the troopers told me. She said we should ask the doctor if there was any way to tell if this might be intentional. We spoke with the doctor, and then he spoke with the troopers. I went in to speak to my husband and see how he was doing, and finally the doctor came in and started questioning my husband, and he started to get very defensive. 
Finally, he asked why he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. And he started to give some excuse, but looked at me, saw I was crying, and just mouthed to him to please be honest. After denying it for a good while, he finally admitted that he was just reckless. Since there was no real proof that he tried to harm himself, the doctor told us that there was nothing he could do. He said he could not justify an emergency detention order, and that, while he tends to believe us, there is just not enough to work with. He was, however, admitted for a 23-hour observation. He ended up with a fracture to his right forearm and bruising to his chest wall. I stayed with him, and his dad went over the next morning to the wrecker service to get his things from the car. When we went home, he went from overcompensating to turning on me, accusing me of trying to have him committed in the ER. He became very mean and isolated himself in our bedroom for the next day. Eventually, he came out to eat, and that is when he dropped his request for a divorce on me. As you can imagine, I was a little distraught, but I told him that he needed to focus on getting better before we made any kind of decision or even talked about it. The next day, he just let me have it. He totally believes that Paul and I have been conspiring against him for over a year. That the reason Paul has been so bad to him is because of me. He basically said a lot of vile, mean SHT. And well, frankly, he was not the man who I knew and loved at that moment. I let him say whatever he wanted to say and didn't argue with him. After he settled down, I just asked him to explain logically how I manipulated him into this department so that I could get him to work for a person I didn't even know was there. Obviously, he couldn't. But that didn't make him any more rational or less angry. The next day was a little better, and he did apologize. I told him that, of course, I accepted his apology, but that I wasn't going to take being called those vile names by anyone, let alone my own husband. We both agreed to just let him heal and not bring up divorce in the meantime. Later in the day, he agreed to go to marriage counseling, and I told him that he needed individual therapy for himself because it wasn't healthy to be this angry. Also, I want him to be able to admit what his parents, the state troopers, the ER doctor, and myself all believe. He tried to end himself that night. BTW my heart sinks typing that, and I cannot tell you the damage this has done to my own emotions and to our marriage. However, I am committed to making this work. This is not him. This is him having a psychotic break but he is not himself. I will stand by him throughout this, even if he has to be angry at me for some time. I know I did not do anything wrong, but I also understand that, from his point of view, this all looks very suspicious. Relevant comments from OP. I had hoped that, for whatever reason, this was an isolated incident specific to his work. But I don't believe it is. I am also going to talk with our family doctor to see if he can evaluate him as well. Between his mom and myself, we are always here with him to watch him. It scares me to no end to think he will harm himself. The chances of that are 100%. I have never looked him up, nor spoken to him, nor Facebook stalked him, nor texted him. He is just an ex, period. One with whom I thought I parted on amicable terms. He wasn't even my longest or most serious boyfriend prior to finding my husband. And you know what? I haven't ever looked him up either. The past is the past, and I do not dwell on it. Maybe I'm just weird, but I do not sit around and reminisce about old boyfriends. If I wanted to be with them, I would have stayed with them or at least tried to. People keep saying this, and if I had it to do over again, I guess I would have karate chopped him. Look, I was taken completely off guard. He hugged me. Yes, I did not break away, but at that time, I had zero time to process anything. I was very worried that if I made a big deal out of it, I would have tipped him off about my husband's feelings towards him. I have no idea if he knows how much my husband hates him. I don't know if he just comes home and vents to me or if he has said anything to him. I would have created a much worse problem for my husband if I had let him know how my husband felt and he hadn't ever done it. Yes, lying to my husband that night was wrong. I have never denied it. I even said in response to a question in the first post that this was also self-preservation. He was completely unhinged and he would have caused himself problems at work if I said it at the Christmas party. I told him within a couple of days and even then, it still went to hell. As to nagging him, I'm not. I want him to get help, period. If he did it once, what is to stop him from doing it again and getting it done the next time? You know who also thinks this? His mother, who has no reason to be on my side, asks, how exactly do I have Paul fired? What do I do? Go in and say, oh hey, my husband comes home and complains about his boss. I'm sure they would throw me out and probably fire my husband. Well, I can give you an update right now about today. Today was a good day. We didn't argue, and he was very open talking about life and its challenges. I consider it a blessing to be honest with you. I could be in a position to not talk to him at all.
Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.